In December of 2019, I was at an all-time low. It was my very first quarter in college, and for the first time in my life, I've never scored a single A in any of my classes. And on top of that, I received my first ever C in any class, bringing my GPA to an abysmal 2.3. I felt defeated, unmotivated, and for the first time ever, lost in my educational career. However, over the next three and a half years, I used these three strategies in order to raise my GPA up all the way back to a 3.8 and putting myself in a position in which I can continue my educational career at a medical school without having to take extra classes to further bolster my resume. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you guys my personal journey on how I ultimately was able to turn things around. So first and foremost, in order to bring a low GPA back up, you need to understand the factors that contributed towards the low GPA in the first place. So during the course of my freshman year winter break, I just took some time to relax by myself and I tried to focus more on what exactly went wrong during the past quarter that led me to my poor academic performances. And through thinking about it and brainstorming a lot, I came up with three main points in which I believe led to my low GPA and low academic performance. Is one, not being able to sleep well. Two, not being able to study as effectively as I should. And three, not enjoying the whole process and grind set of working through my academics. Relating to sleep, I first reflected on my fall quarter during my freshman year. I realized I was staying up way too late on the weekends and weekdays, and this definitely negatively impacted my performance, whether that's listening to my 8 a.m. lecture or being able to effectively take my 8 a.m. midterms and finals during the quarter. Relating to my inability to study as effectively as I should have, I realized I was fairly distractive whenever I'm working on different problem sets and homework assignments. Being my first quarter in college, I simply just brought a lot of my bad habits from high school and not studying as hard for tests, which ultimately led me to struggle a lot on more difficult concepts. And third, relating to enjoying the work that I do, I simply just found myself not being interested in the stuff that I was learning. And this point is just specifically directed at math, now for me in high school, I've always taken math every single year, just going one level after the other, from algebra to pre-calc to multivariable calculus. So by the time I got to college, I was taking linear algebra, even though my major actually doesn't require me to do so. I just thought naturally that's what people did in college, is to just keep on taking math, and boy was I wrong about that. And I only realized that this is not the case my second year of college, and I was just suffering through very difficult math concepts just because I was unaware of my graduation requirements. So after I brainstormed the factors that I think contributed to my low GPA quarter, the next thing that I did is to learn more about strategies that help me improve my academic performance. So in order to fix my inability to get good sleep in college, I learned more about how to build an effective college schedule that works. I previously made a video actually during my second year of college in which you should definitely check out. But by understanding my most productive hours of the day, picking classes that best match is my optimal schedule, and by allocating appropriate study times as well as fun leisure time, I was able to ensure a balance between my academics and my more personal life. At the same time, I feel like by scheduling out everything, I was able to make sure that I have enough breaks in between, so then I can ultimately avoid burnout and be more efficient and productive with the time that I have. Regarding the point on being able to study effectively, what really helped me through this process is by building relationships with others and also looking for mentors within my area of study. Previously, as a college pre-med in linear algebra, there weren't a lot of people like me, and I found it very difficult to be able to plan out my four-year plan and ultimately plan out a roadmap on what I want to do after college, which in my case is to be able to apply and go to medical school. So the following quarters, I began to join more pre-med related clubs and ultimately be able to meet more pre-meds in that way. So that way, if I do have any questions, whether that's relating to my major or pre-med in general, I always will have someone to be able to go to and give me advice as needed. And to address the third problem that I originally had, which is about enjoying the work that I'm doing, a strategy that I use to improve that is that I definitely took more of an active approach when it came to my education and began in college to delve more into the topics that I wanted to learn, outside of the prerequisite courses that my major required me to take. Starting from my second quarter in college until I graduated, I found myself going to my counselor's office a lot, and I did so just to talk quarter through quarter about my next course of action on class 
classes that I should take. And I felt like through them, I was able to get more suggestions on similar courses in order to achieve the same graduation requirements. And at the same time, I'm also making sure that I'm still satisfying everything that I need in order to graduate in four years in the process as well. In addition to talk to my counselors, I also got to talk a lot more with my peers throughout college. So I can hear their experiences about taking a course with a certain professor, or just simply about the content of the course. Finally, once I've learned enough about different strategies to improve my performance, the third and final step is to put these strategies into action and then stay disciplined with all of these. When it came to building a college schedule for me to follow, I didn't want to jump into the fire right away because that might be very stressful and I think it would have been very easy for me to overbook my calendar and I'll burn out in the process doing so. So the first steps that I've taken is I'll schedule out what I do on an hourly basis on both Tuesdays and Thursdays. Once I was able to successfully achieve everything that I did on a Tuesday and a Thursday, I then slowly expanded my hourly calendar out to the other three weekdays, and ultimately through all seven days of the week. Through this process, I felt like I built up my discipline, and I was able to refine my technique on building a schedule for every day without ever feeling completely overwhelmed and exhausted. To put my strategy on looking for mentors into effect, I made it my goal every week to either talk to somebody new or be able to catch up with an old friend. Through this strategy, I felt like I was able to effectively build more connections in college, but at the same time keeping in touch with the people that has helped me along the way. And specifically with this strategy, I felt like by the end of the quarter, I had a core group in which I'm not shy in asking for any type of advice that I needed on something. And finally, when it comes to taking control of my education, I made sure every quarter I was able to do the same reflection that I did when I first had a 2.3 GPA, remind myself how far I've achieved, and I'll do a similar brain storm on what went well in this quarter or what's something that I can improve on for next quarter and then constantly tweak different study strategies while also being open towards experimenting with new ones and learning from other people whether in person or online about what I can do to make the next quarter the best quarter that has yet to come. As for a small concluding remark for this video, I just wanted to share with you guys my story and let you guys know that it is okay to struggle in college. I've been there, I've done that, and it's okay to ask for help. It's important to never give up on yourself, your GPA can recover, and you are more than your GPA. What's happened in the past has already happened. The next best thing you can do is to move past it, take each course not just for the grade, but also for all the material and information that you'll be able to learn, so that you can be a better student, and trust that in the end, everything will work out or you'll learn another valuable lesson. Thanks for watching, hope you guys have a wonderful day, and we'll see you in another video. Peace.